Boy, AEW did it again. They're the gift that keeps on giving. Right now on In This Very Ring. Wait! I can't believe it! Yes! Yes! Iraq is going to WrestleMania! Randy up his inch for another curb stop. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Unbelievable counter! Oh, my God! Unbelievable! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of In This Very Ring. Right here live on A2D Radio. I am, without a shadow of a doubt, the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. My name is Ritz. And joining me as he does each and every Friday night, the OGP of A2D. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Pete Evans. Hats off to you beautiful people out there. Greetings and salutations. Hot week of wrestling. Um, we, I'm actually. It feels good to be able to call it that now. Right. Um, <laughs> right out in the open. Uh, hot week of professional wrestling, man. I'm looking here. I'm here to talk about it. But uh, yeah, man. TK is the one who won't go away. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like the cockroach. <laughs> but before we get into all of that, we are brought to you by our friends at Alan D Travel. Alan D Travel specializes in creating the vacation of your dreams at Disney Universal or wherever your heart calls you. Let their talented team of travel experts, including yours truly, create a custom vacation for you without any of the stress. Alan Z on over to alanz-travel.com backslash take the trip to get in touch with myself or Pete's co-host over there on Eagles Talk, Chuck Sparannon, and we can get started on planning your next magical vacation tonight. Jesus. What in the world? You oh, see you, it? Yeah, you see it? <laughs> yeah, I see We're going to wait till he comes back in the frame. It's, uh, before he I comes mean, in here, I'm going to tell him to put on a virtual background. Hey, before we bring you in, try a virtual background. <laughs> while, while we get that figured out, um, we are, we're a, about a week away from, you know, removed mm. from WrestleMania. Yep. Right? And it was, what a great WrestleMania it was. We're going to talk about Fallout and everything, because the week after was kind of mid, right? As we bring Butters in. That's better. I'll take that for tonight. But God, are we going to work on that thing? <laughs> I don't know what's going I, on. Did, did, I, what can I do? What can Jeez. I say, man? Yeah, your screen can't catch up to how fast you're moving, so just try to be still and just talk like a normal. Yeah. Like We're, we're, we're going to work on that. You, you and I, yeah. <laughs> Oh, anyway. <laughs> wow, that really jacked me up. That 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 confused me. But while I, and we're gonna get into it a little bit later, it's probably a little controversial given the events of tonight. I feel like post WrestleMania was kind of like it was just there. Yeah. They, they gave us everything, and which I'm cool with, right? They gave mm -hmm. us everything on Saturday and Sunday. They left it all in the ring, and. Now they were like, "All right, we have to recoup ourselves." You yeah, the, you, you kind of got to rejuvenate, take some R and R, and honestly, where some manias recently had not recently, but in the past, have been lackluster. So you figured a raw after mania was start of something to get some surprise or kind of closing off something. Like you really felt after Sunday, like you kind of we needed a breather, like it was too hot, like. We how like how much more could we do, right? Yeah, and you could, I, I don't think you could have done anything else, right? Like, yeah. and I think Mon Monday Raw at the Mania, which I was I was present. Um, that kind of it's, it's almost like it set the state set the table up a little bit, where I felt like tonight what, what we saw SmackDown and things that I think we'll get into this week of wrestling um, was more of a true next chapter after Mania. Where Monday night was more like, let's close this loop. Let's kind of set something up, but let's really have a night to kind of celebrate and the decisions that we made and who we put at the top. And the torchbearer, you heard Cody Rose refer to the night as a torchbearer, mm -hmm. uh, which is that's that's true for the most part. So, um, yeah, man, uh, can't wait to get into it. And while while WWE had a phenomenal weekend with WrestleMania and the week leading up to WrestleMania, the hype was real. Philadelphia did not disappoint. AEW really stole the show come Wednesday for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Wednesday night, AEW, in response to CM Punk, 
having a conversation on the MMA hour last uh, the week prior. Mm-hmm. Uh, they decided they were going to release the all in footage, the confrontation between CM Punk and Jack Perry. If you watched it, it's a hard watch because there's, if I'm correct, because I didn't catch it live. There was no sound, right? There was no sound. No. no. It's, did anybody do like commentary over it or did they just play it? No, they, they literally played it. They they played it, they let it they let it breathe. Um they kind of just let it lay down for it. And I had to rewind it and watch it twice because like, is this really all that it is? It was it was just 30 to 45 seconds of just ear to ear talking, and then you you got what you got what you got. And I mean the 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 front the front chokehold. The bulldog choke was probably only on for like two or three seconds before Joe stepped in. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was it was to the point to based off of what TK had said, how he feared for his life with the fire and this, that, and the third. I didn't see TK in the shot at all in the footage. I see no, he barricaded Punk, off to the right. Right, I see Punk turn around afterwards, and he's kind of talking to someone, not yelling at someone in that direction, but you can't see them on camera, so. I mean, if you want to take anything that may be a slight one for AEW in this whole situation, maybe that because that still may hold water because we didn't see it on the footage after that. But as Butter so so elo- eloquently alluded to earlier in our group chat, um, this ain't over. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And, and that kind of leads us into our poll question. AEW did gain nothing by releasing the all-in footage. A lot of people would say they gained a ratings pop. Right, right. Like Bubble Ray Dudley uh, on Busted Open at one point, uh, he said, "Before I put my, you know, head to pillow tonight, I'm gonna pray to God that mm-hmm. AEW at least got a pop in the ratings for this." Have the ratings come out yet? Uh, I haven't looked. Uh, you know, as I, we think, I think eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. That's like not 50, good. Enough. That's not good enough. It's no, like fifty thousand more. Right, that doesn't move the needle enough to show for to show it. Right, you right. the the three of us plus Chrome, we all had very long conversations earlier this week as it all uh, kind of came to fruition. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go around the table though. I kind of already think I know where everybody agrees. I mean, where everybody sits with this. But mm-hmm. Pete, we're gonna start with you. What what do you what do you think? Um, of the whole thing in general. Does does AEW gain anything out of it? No, because it's 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 a dollar shade it's a dollar it's a dollar late and a day short. Because this should have came out honestly, even now it coming out, it's there's penalties involved eventually assumingly. So it should have really never came out in the first place. But even if you did this right at like if you did this the dynamite after Survivor series, like when he came back, yeah, do it then and then you can still deal with the fallout from it, but it, at least then you could you 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 seem proactive instead of reactive, right? Um, they gained absolutely nothing. They tried to tie it. They tied it into the FTR versus Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Titles. And I said this before. I was saying it in the chat, and we'll say it here on this platform. We got eighty three people watching across all platforms. Do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, do that whole good jazz. Feed the algo be, uh, be uh, beast. I'm sorry, I said I don't know what the hell I was said, but. Uh, Essentially, FTR versus Young Bucks doesn't need any extra juice, in my opinion. But what? But why did this placate into FTR versus the Young Bucks? Because of the association with CM Punk and FTR. Okay, well, how does Jack Perry fit into it? Hopefully, 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 the one, the one glimmer of hope, and we'll see because. Eight, they, Wednesday night wasn't good for them, not just because of this, but also a promo that a certain someone did. But before this, before last Wednesday, before this Dynamite, this past Wednesday, they had been doing good. That game been keeping me engaged where I was actually watching it. Not live, but I would watch it. I would watch the full show. If you can somehow, and you'll get it for a week in Chicago, if they bring back Jack Perry in Chicago and have him join up with the Young Bucks, that could make for something, and you can make a uh, you can you're going to get him heat regardless. But you oh, can, he's going to return. He's going to definitely return and screw over FDR. That's a right. Given. So, 
So in that situation, if that may be the one glimmer of hope that you create, you elevate another star, essentially. But, I mean... It's kind of hard to I'll, elevate a star who just looked, who just got punked. No pun I mean, but, but see, here's the thing. Jet, I will say this. Jack Perry's not MMA trained. You know what I mean? So, like, regardless of how successful or unsuccessful CM Punk's MMA career was, he went through that training. He has more knowledge in that close quarter combat when it comes to those type of that 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 type of fighting versus Jack Perry. And you know what I mean? So, and he's bigger than Jack Perry. I mean, like in anything in that in that fight, CM Punk should win, right? You know, if that, it's going to be a legit thing. You see how fast CM Punk let go when Joe came over there because it was like I'm not dealing with that. That's a whole different animal. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, when, and him and Joe is cool, but still at the same time, he didn't have to have Joe get to that level to physically pull him off. It's just they gain nothing from it Wednesday. I mean, you could do the Raiders bump, you could do the publicity. Any publicity is good publicity, I guess. In this situation, it's just now that the the new information is coming out today about the potential fines up to seven well, and, and a half. You know what I mean? Before, like that's it's not worth it. Before you even get to the potential fines. If we're- we're going to talk about because it's a great point that Butters brought up in, in our conversation earlier. So I'm going to let him take the reins on that one. Mm-hmm. But there are there's a, a large amount of people mm-hmm. that have no idea that CM Punk was on the MMA hour because it wasn't pr- promoted by WWE. It wasn't promoted by mm-hmm. Paul. Right? Unless you caught a clip on TikTok. Right, but you're also getting that out of context, so that's neither here nor there. But nobody knew, huh? Also, yes, nobody knew that Punk was on there. So, if you're not somebody that follows it like the three of us do, or like people in our chat do, if this is your first night watching or your second night watching AEW, wait a minute, that guy's on the other program. Wait a wait a minute. Why are we showing this? Are we what 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 why? Six no almost idea. six months later. Yeah, nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Like and take out the fact of, of you can take out the fact that punk's on the other network. Mm-hmm. It's such old news, it's so cold yep. that all you did in this scenario is show okay. They're at Gorilla, because you can tell it's Gorilla for them. Mm-hmm. Right? Joe's over there in the corner. They're getting ready for Joe versus Punk. Okay, okay. Jack Perry and Punk are having a conversation, and Punk and them get into it. And only, like, two people break this feud up. You don't see any no- any mm-hmm. noticeable producers or executives or anything like that in your, your hub, your central hub of your show for that night. There ain't nobody around. That's nope. been on, on, what? This, on this feed. Just Joe question. and Chris here. Uh, question for you. What let so what was the first match of all in? Was it uh, what, was it Hook and Perry? No, Hook and Perry, I, Hook and Perry, Perry was a pre show with the uh so Punk the Joe was match. the first Joe, Punk Joe was the first match of all in. I'm pulling it up to double check but hold on. Because that's yeah, where I'm Punk like, and Joe were the first were the first match of all in. That's I mean, I get it, but that's also that's on that's once again that lays at TK's feet, not having a policy a locker room. You already know you have not seen Jack Perry on collision for that very exact reason. He doesn't vibe with Punk. So then you put these guys in a situation to where they're gonna be a close con like close quarter. Well, and not even the fact that you haven't seen Jack Perry on collision. Go back and listen to the promo. Not the promo, the interview. I'm sorry. Punk states, he goes, Tony Schiavone, I'm sitting in catering. It's one of the first shows we were doing. I'm sitting in catering. Tony Schiavone comes up to me and he says, hey, Jack Perry is, is cursing everybody out. He wants to you know, do the spot. We're all saying no, blah, blah, blah. Why do I have to get involved? Because I forget the names he rattled off, but like three people tell him no, including Schiavone. Mm-hmm. So Punk goes over there and he goes, hey man, we're not going to do this. right? We're not doing this on Friday night. You want to do that? Go back to Wednesday. Because he wanted to break a a window of a rental car. Yeah. And that would ruin it for wrestlers all over the country. 
right? So mm -hmm. it's like, no, we're not doing that here. And, and Punk Steven goes, he goes, I thought we were creating the two shows to separate people that don't get along. Right. And, you know, to Pete's point. And you just, you put these people in a situation. You don't clear Gorilla. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, Jack, don't come through Gorilla. Go, you know, go around the corner. Right, yeah. go show or, or stage when your match is over, go around the corner. I want to keep you guys separate. I know there's heat, whatever have you. Hey, Tom, what's going on, buddy? I love that picture of Tom and Cass. Yeah, it's uh, oh man, but but it, it and this this goes back to what I said when I got on my soapbox on Wednesday, and I'm actually gonna read what I wrote mm -hmm. on Thursday. Was it was Thursday? Was it Thursday? I got on my soapbox. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm going to read. Yeah. I, I got on a soapbox Thursday in our chat, and I'm going to read it here in just a minute once I let Butters answer the poll question. But it, it valid. And I said this after I watched the MMA uh, hour interview. Mm -hmm. It validated and vindicated everything I've said for the last four years about Tony Khan and AEW. And by taking this step and being as petty as they were in the reveal of this footage that no one gave a damn about, you're just showing your immaturity. But Butters, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, no, I, I'm going to you know, agree with the poll. They, they gained absolutely zero from showing this footage. If the only thing Tony gained... Was a headache from from his legal troubles about to happen? A headache from his daddy. It, that's the only thing he's gaining is headache after headache. Because well, and, and, ex, and explain those legal troubles because you sent us mm -hmm. you sent Correct. us a uh, a couple of different tweets today. Which, for mm -hmm. the record, let, let let me before Butters gets into this, I want to make one thing very very clear. Okay, one, we are not legal professionals. Correct. Okay, so everything that we're about to talk about, we did research behind, but we are not the prosecutors, we are not the jury, we are not nothing. However, based on accusations that have been made, we had to get some clarification. So, Butters, please go ahead. So, after the show, Tony Khan, you know, rushing to put all that footage, you know, pulling on, getting everybody, you know, Pulling that footage, pulling that footage because everybody's using that footage side by side with the punk interview, you know. So he's had to get it pulled down. And what, what he's been doing, and and to clarify, to expand on that a little bit more, let, let's mm -hmm. let's call it what it is. AEW is copyright striking everything yep. following AEW Dynamite. Anything that included that footage. That's why we're not showing. My plan was to show the footage on here <laughs> when they made when they said what it was. I said, screw it, I'll show the damn footage. But we were not about to get copyrighted from AEW. Right, so he, you know, he he breached the UK GDPR uh, law. Oh, talking about you know the security cam footage, basically using it for their own specific purposes instead of with I guess with the UK, if you're using security cam footage, it's only supposed to be personal for investigation and stuff like that. You can't just go oh. air it live on national TV. Without getting in trouble. Yep. And what's the fine monetary that you said he was looking at? Um, he's looking at about let's see, a fine of up to seventeen point five million pounds, or four percent of his total worldwide annual turnover, which everyone's higher. In which after last year's annual turnover, he's probably looking at more closer to the seventeen point five million. Yeah. So let let let's pounds, let's, not U.S. dollars, folks. That's seventeen yeah, and a half million. That's, pounds, about, that's, pounds, about, that's so. about seven million dollars U.S. No, it should be more than that because pounds are are the higher value. No, I just look. I looked it up earlier. It's about seven million. Really? really? Seven, I think so. Hmm. No, you're you're so far wrong. It's not even funny. I, it's going to be probably close to like twenty million U.S. If twenty-one not more. point twenty-one one sorry. seven eight eighty-three. Okay. So I did math and, wrong. anyway, you you, but, you were looking at pesos or something. I don't know what you were. Let, 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 me, <laughs> let me explain this a little bit more. Okay, right. so based on 
the information that we have looked up and, and what we have put together based on what we've read. Article 83-5-A states that the infringe infringement on the basic principles for processing personal data are subject to the highest tier of administrative fines. This could mean a fine up to 17.5 million pounds or 4% of your total worldwide annual turnover, whichever is higher. Because you process, uh, process, uh, process lawfully, fairly, and in a, <laughs> yada, 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 I'm reading here, so bear with me. Collected for specific purposes, further processing. Yo, Daily. What's up, Daily? So, so to Butter's point, right, security camera footage in the UK is designed for legitimate purposes. When that legitimate purpose is used for an entertainment value, which mm -hmm. in this instance it would be to further a storyline, and it and from my understanding, it is not AEW cameras that captured this. It was right, this is security in security Wembley. footage. This was Wembley security footage that they were not so, authorized to use from what I what we are gathering based on what we can find out. The fact that his lawyers even signed off on this. But but hold on. There's no what guarantee mean, that the lawyers point. signed off on it. Now now we're dipping into the world of speculation by saying something like that. Which I'm not I'm not gonna allow us to do. Right. Yeah. Knowing Tony Khan. There's no guarantee that a lawyer said, okay, sure, go ahead and do this. Oh, hell. What? <laughs> I know what he's talking about. Oh, and I oh. know who that is. Do you know who that is? No, I have no idea who that Please is. Please allow me to introduce you to Butter's mom. <laughs> <laughs> the, the gift that keeps on giving. It's on giving. Oh, wow. oh Lord. Uh, Butters, I love you, mother. She is a gem. She's a very sweet lady. I've been she a lot since you've been in here. I, I, I've, I've never even met her, and I love her already. <laughs> She's uh, a legend in our chat. Okay. Okay. She is um, a legend. But no, there was something that you one of you said or said um that they signed off on it. Like the fact that Punk and the and Perry Punk already wasn't feeling Perry, but then the fact that he had to go confront him because he was throwing a hissy fit and didn't want to take no for an answer, and then Shivani felt as if he had to interject Punk to get this guy to to get this guy to listen, and then from there we had this situation, and then no one needs to sign off on anything in AEW. If TK wants to do it, it's going to get done, and you just have to get on board. It's literally like yep. the talent is watching a burning ship. You know, and, and nobody's putting the fire out because this key can't get out of his own way. Exactly. So I'm going to read. This was Thursday morning at local mm -hmm. time for me, 1149 in the morning. Because you guys were going back and forth, you chrome and butters. Y'all mm -hmm. were going back and forth talking about the footage. And I had been really, really quiet. Because <laughs> y'all know how I feel about Tony Khan. And I decided to say, so can I get on my soapbox now? And I was encouraged to do so. So here's what I wrote. Tony Khan is the worst thing that's ever happened in the world of professional wrestling. This is an overgrown child with daddy's checkbook. He has no idea how to run a wrestling promotion. Oh, somebody talked about my company? Let's show this video and try to ruin your reputation. Plot twist, you jackass. It made everyone else shit on your company. You didn't build competition to WWE. You built a mockery of the industry. You once had nothing but the future of this industry, and you let your company become a modern-day version of a promotion long since past. There's absolutely no reason why that video should have ever seen the light of day. What did it do for you? Nothing. It made you look like a bigger joke than you already are. You can't put a compelling story together to save your life right now. You want to try to be the next Vince McMahon? Yet you can't even be Eric Bischoff, let alone Paul Heyman, Dusty Rhodes, Jim Cornette. The list goes on. When you think of promoters and bookers, what did the best of the best have? They had people around them, advising them, helping them, taking the lead on things. 
Uh, Tony, you stretch yourself so thin that you think it's okay to take shots at an ex-superstar following an interview he did. You think it's okay to take shots at executives of a rival company. The best thing you could have ever done was to never once mention anything related to the WWE. Yet you give them more attention than they will ever give you. You're like a child trying to have mommy and daddy say how proud they are of you. Sit down, get out of the way, and let the adults go to work. I mean, it's straight. It's to the point. Um, don't need validation in this business. I will every once in a while they stumble into a good storyline. I will say I'm really enjoying Swerve versus Joe. Um, I didn't th- I didn't know what direction they were going after MGF dropped the gut to Joe. I like I love this. I hope the payoff comes with sort of being uh become a champion next Sunday. Um but then from right. there it's so there it's, it's, you go. I don't even know that their pay per view is next Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it's next Sunday. Um and, and you have you have good like they had they have good in ring work, but everything else it's one it's it feels like a lot of stuff is rushed. But in this scenario, I don't this is why I said this is the first time I ever felt as if where Shad Khan may need to step in. Is because you can't let personal emotions get in the way of business. And this just wasn't good business. No, it was like, it's, got off of it. It's, it's, it's like Vince wouldn't do this. It wouldn't have got to that point with Vince in the first place. I don't think it's going to get to that point with Triple H at all. You see what actions they're taking with Drew Gulak already. Yep. You know what I mean? He who, he who should not be named already. Removed from the graphic, removed from everything, got asked to move and leave from the Hall of Fame because he was there sitting in close quarters with somebody from Ronda Rousey's inner circle. So you just like these type of things, bro, just can't you just can't do this because it takes so it takes so much away from your product and what you've been putting out coming off the heels of the greatest gate WrestleMania. One of the greatest WrestleManias, top to bottom, and car in every in every aspect. You had you had a your rival company mm-hmm. in a five day span, five days, put two hundred and fourteen thousand people in different you, buildings. And less than a week, if you count tonight's gate, it was two hundred and sixteen thousand or something. If you count Detroit and the SmackDown tonight, so it was two hundred and one thousand. 201,000. I thought by the end no, of the- it was two, 201. Okay, 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 okay. So, so that's what I'm saying. So, it was 201 just in Philly between SmackDown, Hall of Fame, Stand and Deliver, Night One, Night Two, and Raw. 201,000. And you take the 15,000. This is the 18th straight and that's sellout. That's not even talking world either. Your world was crazy. And then in the course of a week in two different countries. Mm-hmm. You didn't even touch that. No, you didn't no, even it's... touch a hundred thousand. And the thing is, oh. and the the payroll that you have for such a smaller company, and the talent that you have, it it, it is they, they, it's 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 almost like Tony just he wants to see what he saw sitting as a kid in front of the TV watching WrestleMania WrestleMania eight. Holy butters. Butters, how long have I been saying that? You know what I mean? And, and it's that that's his goal. His Forever. Goal is, his goal isn't to grow an empire. His goal isn't to grow a business. His goal is to daddy already made the money. Whether this is success, successful or not, I'm good. I ultimately it probably will never happen just because Shad would have to step in. Three years from now, I can ultimately see WWE acquiring AEW. Two to one years, one to two years. You think it's it could be because it's he like, can, hold on, how do I, you come I, back I, from this? He has to completely remove himself from anything. No more t- big announcement, no more of this, no more of that. You just play the background, go hire somebody to be the face, a Jack Tunney. But I don't even know guys that will actually be good that will want to work with him. You see what I'm saying? Like, like nobody, nobody wanted that footage out. Like you watched Tony, Tony no. Schiavone afterwards. It came out the Bucks didn't want that. And here, here's the thing of it, guys. It is May. I'm sorry, it's April 12th. Mm-hmm. 
One of the last reports I can find. This is from March 16th of this year. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. I would say something, brothers, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I mean, wow. The places that you have been. Good night, mother. Woo! So, anyway. <laughs> AEW's current TV deal expires at the end of this year. Oh, yeah. So that you're right. It could be early. As of a month ago, they just started. So the NBA just started negotiations with Warner Brothers Discovery. Because the, the report, the, the Wrestling Observer has a report. And it states, the NBA and BDW have begun serious negotiations for a new TV package. Sports Business Journal claim sources say the sides are in about 75% agreement. Most believe that serious WBD and AEW negotiations will take place after the NBA deal. The higher priority deal is completed. Oh, for sure. For sure. AEW like, is still in the executive negotiating period for Warner Brothers, which means Tony Khan's company is barred from entertaining offers or talks with anyone else until that period ends. So, what does that mean? That means, as of right now, come January 1, 2024, when the WWE, I'm sorry, 2025, when the WWE launches on Netflix, a $5 billion deal, mm-hmm. AEW is going to be sitting there with no TV rights. They're not going to be able to be seen anywhere. Except maybe their YouTube page. And unlike TNA Impact, you don't come back from that. You have nope. two higher profile stars who are not going to stick around to just be a YouTube star. Yep. 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 Like it's crazy when you think about it. I hear people talk about, "Oh, they got Jay White. What's he doing? Right? How's he involved? You got Keith Lee. You got Adam Cole. Obviously injuries, but that whole you did this. The biggest storyline for the last six months of AEW was who was the devil? Yeah, you had you had to turn. And, and, and how well did that work out for you? Considering the Where guy you said the devil is injured. And was injured when you revealed it, you schmuck. Not even just that, but where's the UDK at now? You was pushing word low, talking this, this, and this. Face Joe. Face Joe not even on a pay-per-view. He faced him on a regular dynamite, and he lost, and now he's gone. And you you build this story. You have this reveal. And then the guy that you're going to have the feud with goes away. Yep. Yep. They should have they should have had MJF lose clean. Don't reveal anything. They, have him come back to Denver. They moved Wardlow to glorified muscle. He is currently protecting the Ring of Honor tag team champions. He is protecting their title run. He, he was doing this so he's right back to where he started. Yes. Right back to I mean, dude. Adam, like Edge, I love you to death. Hall of Famer. You can sit here and say you're having as much fun in the world there, but look, listen, man. Dog, like it's it's an insane like it's it's yeah, like you let it but does crazy. somebody like Edge need it? No. no. But like you know why somebody... he's there? He's there because he's fighting new people. They have yeah. they they have something for him to do. They're gonna put him in the ring and let him do what he couldn't do for nine years, eleven years, whatever it was. Yeah, like some but somebody like this who I think is a star and could be a star in WWE. If he and if he doesn't say stupid shit like Will Osprey said this past Wednesday night, Max Caster, I would love to see. Man. But yep. somebody like somebody like that who can talk, can go, has personality, has a charisma. He like he may never oh, get that go. shot. Sammy Guevara. Where is if, he at? Where's Where's him? Tay at? If well, well, I figured Tay's at home with the baby. 
Sammy right? got, got suspended for the Jeff Hardy incident. But but that doesn't happen if you have structure. That doesn't happen if you have people in place running the company like a company and not like a boys club where we're just going to go out there and fight. If you want fight night, if you want a war, if you want a brawl, go find an alley. Yep. Go, put, all right done go, that yet. Put, a, go put a camera in an alley and just let them tussle over a chew toy. Bro, it's bad, man. It's I, and I really think about like you're doing these shows a national t like if I'm WBD right also, Warner yeah. Brothers, if I'm Warner Brothers right and I'm sitting here we about to negotiate, you're I have you nationally televised, right? And your gate is only drawing two thousand. Hey Don Don, did you go to SmackDown? Were you in attendance? Let us know. Um, but two thousand, two thousand people. Like you have Hall of Famers, all time greats, up and coming greats, all time greats, doing high school gymnasium shows. As far as people, and I will say this: the production and the set, I actually like it better now. It's just a shame that it's when you can take a take a step back, right? And you think about AEW as a whole. You look at the roster, the production, the presentation, and the one thing we all can agree on that is bad out of all of it is the guy who's running it. Dude, like that's that's a glaring problem. Like, listen, just go away, become hands off. You don't have to make every decision. You don't need veto. You don't need executive veto power, bro, because that move was not it. Not it at all. Like, let let's go back to vengeance day. No, let's do the. Uh, I don't want to do Perth because Perth is. I want to do U.S. based to U.S. based. We gotta go to Royal Rumble. Okay. And I'm gonna compare Royal Rumble to uh as far as like the pay-per-view buys and stuff or whatever. If I can find them. Well, you'll find it'll be easier to find the AEW pay-per-view buys. I mean, with the Peacock stuff, you gotta look at the subscriptions. You may have to look like out outside All of right, country so where they still, still do pay-per-view right, buys so, and things like that. So here AEW Revolution. Okay. Which keep in mind, this is Sting's last match. They've been talking about it for a yes. year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this was held in the Greensboro, Greensboro Coliseum, a wrestling town. Mm -hmm. 16,118 fans. Bro. This was up significantly from the year prior, which only saw 9,000 people. At the San Francisco Chase Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. WWE Royal Rumble, 46,082. Yeah. It's almost like they're in, they're in jeopardy, and he's been tying his wagon to all in and Wembley again this year. You don't have the storylines going into that that you had last year. Like everybody wanted to be there to, to finally see the turn. On, on MJF from Adam Cole. That didn't happen, which is a good swerve and somewhat. And then ever since then, it was downhill. So you don't have a storyline like that to build into now. You, I, well, I, I'll book this. If Swerve wins it next Friday, next next Sunday, he's a champion going into all in. AEW World Heavyweight title, Swerve versus Will Ospreay. It, it, it'll take care of itself. It'll take yeah. care of itself. That'll take. So you have that in your back pocket, right? Or you could do. You could do Okada and Osprey at, at all in. That's gonna sell. But what else, like what is I would if I literally can sit face to face with TK right now or do an interview like this, what are you in this for? How do you gauge yourself? How do you how do you want your talent? Like, all right, here's a perfect example. How do you hold your talent to a higher standard than you hold yourself? Well, uh, how do you how do you expect your talent? You want your talent to not respond to Twitter things. You want them to not to be involved in controversies, but you can't do that yourself. You have to be the figurehead of your company. You have mm -hmm. to lead by example. You have to practice what you preach, and you're not doing that. So what kind of respect do you think the people that you're signing these million-dollar checks for, how they truly, truly view you? You see what I'm saying? Let, let, let's put this in, Let's keep this in perspective, okay? We're talking about the gate numbers. We talk about attendance. 
the Greensboro Coliseum, based on the research. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. Holds 22,000 people. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, AEW sold 73.26% of that, that house. Given, now, to keep in mind, they have a stage which does block off some. Wow. Right? Mm-hmm. Neither here nor there. Keep that in mind when I tell you that the Tropicana Field holds 42,000 people. 42,735 and WWE put 46,082 people in there. They did 107%. Yep. And this is why, like, from that, from this point, this moment on, WWE is, is his own entity by itself. There's no wrestling company on this planet that can be even mentioned in the same vein as them. They are a juggernaut business. They are they mm-hmm. are at the top. They are there's no there's nothing else. It's so the, we don't know what the Royal Rumble gate numbers were. Mm-hmm. But it's estimated that it was the 11th largest gate in wrestling history, which is something to be said. AEW generated a gate of a million dollars. The he average paid ticket, his talent more than that. He lost money. The average ticket price was $55 for the pay-per-view. O, OVG's hospitality, hospitality's food and beverage per capita spending average at $19, excluding the suite, resulting in 306242 in concession revenues. In terms of merchandise, the average amount spent was $21.64, and it was largely driven by Sting's final match. That approximated 349000 in sales. Nearly wow. all of the merch sold out. The report stated the commercial performance was higher, was at the higher end for family-oriented shows and more in line with revenue generated by concerts. I mean, and Cody sold a million dollars. by Royal, <laughs> Royal Rumble had 15,500 pay-per-view buys, wow. which was down. Mm. But I mean, you, my, not... my God, guys. Right, like what to your point, what are you in this for? Exactly. What like what what is what is your motivation to this? What's the reason that feeling that you had back in twenty and winter twenty nineteen? Was that that that's when they announced it? I, I think so, yeah. And when in the winter of twenty nineteen, that motivation that you had when you were on that stage in California and y'all announced on AEW All Elite Wrestling, everyone involved, including Matt and Nick have to go back and try to find that. Well, even for, I don't even know how much Matt and Nick are in it for, because remember, uh, which uh, was it, Matt's wife? Matt's wife is no longer with the company anymore. Because they are EVPs and title only. Their gimmick has more power than they do. Yeah, so that's like, I I, I think 60% of that locker room right oh, now. Oh, wow. It's, it's Brother. Really yeah, yeah. Strong. Hey strong candy but but blue pants can get it all day of the week twice on sunday y'all know who i'm talking about mm, blue, my pants baby. The, blue, blue pants for the blue brand but no um honestly man i think he's waiting sport. for his contract uh <laughs> Keith Lee's contract waiting to be up um i really like i said it before I, I i so wish that the ue was right now still in wwe i oh my god that would be that would be amazing i because uh... but We'll see, man. We'll see. I, I already just... spent forty-five minutes on this, <laughs> but I, I, I do, I do my best not to talk about AEW because every time we do, it, it just fires me up and it makes me so angry at their sheer stupidity. Oh. You keep here's the thing: you keep saying there, it's not there, it's him, it's him <laughs> and everyone. But, but by proxy, but by proxy, because he. He is well, AEW, just like just like at one point we would say Vince was WWE. Yeah, right. Without Tony Khan, there is no AEW because there's yeah. no money. Yeah, right. There's no money so for all intents and purposes. While I don't, there's also no talent. Do, yeah, there's also no yeah. talent. But right now, <laughs> is there talent? <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like we need a Discord channel. Yeah, we do. We, yeah. we we need a we need a sound on board for ITVR for for the faithful that, every day. That that is a, another conversation for another time. Yeah. Uh, but I don't hate I don't hate the idea. Well, let's transition. I wish I could have a second poll question. 
um, to put up. But I'll ask you guys, because we always have this conversation. Usually Butters and I take the week after WrestleMania off because we are exhausted. And up until Wednesday when we saw the footage, that was what I was going to do. I was going to take this week off because, and this is my question to you guys, did this week in wrestling just kind of suck? I shouldn't say suck. Suck's the wrong word. Was it a letdown? We ask this question every we ask this question every year, right? Post WrestleMania, life mm-hmm. after WrestleMania, just doesn't hit like it used to. I wouldn't say and it's it, a letdown for this week. I mean, we got a few special moments, something a little bit better than what it's been in the past. So I wouldn't say it's a letdown, but it had it was a little lackluster this week. I would I would say the perfect terminology is probably a downshift. Like you had to change gears. You couldn't have the engine redlined and wide open anymore. Like you had to slow it down a little bit. But we still got some things, right? Like you got a guy that you've been calling the main event and his name. Now he's going to be in the main event for a world title against someone else other than his cousin. Right. So we have that to look forward to. Um, you saw Ilya, you saw Roxy, you saw Braun Breaker tonight, who they try to reintroduce. And I don't know why they change his music, anything else like that. I don't like that stuff. But I mean, you saw Jade. Jade is Jade was on TV three times this week. Yeah, no, I forgot Kevin you, didn't even work there. You see what I'm saying? And then it, it, it is what it is, but you got builds now. You got two separate titles now, set of titles for the tag team titles. So now you see Street Profits. Now they have something to fight for. You don't have all this hogging, right? And then we saw the, the debut of Tama Tonga tonight. So um, it's, it, I get it. It's not what it was. And it's hard to be that. But I can tell you from being in a crowd at, at, at Raw at the Mania, every emotion in the world happened when The Rock came out. He got booed. He got told the STFU. Then he got cheered. I mean, they said, thank you, Roman. Like, it's everything was... It was a lot, man. What I will say, and I think we touched on it at the beginning of the show. If you go back and you watch Raw, knowing what Mm -hmm. we just watched the past two days, Raw was a love letter to everybody that partook in the weekend. (coughs) Everybody that won. Sami Mm -hmm. Zayn, uh, Cody Rhodes, right? Uh, Even Rhea, Awesome Truth. Everybody that won, they put every the other person over. Yep. So Damien, right, put Drew mm-hmm. and Seth kind of over, yeah. right? Everybody got their flowers for such an amazing weekend. And you saw some That's of that right. carry over tonight as well on SmackDown, right, with the SmackDown stars. Mm-hmm. So we got you got eight town down under percent. We're the best undefeated tag team champions of all time. Like Mitch, you just won them. Like exactly. Ah, <laughs> uh, little stuff like that, man. No, absolutely. But I will say when I think of Raw, and while yes, it was a love letter, and I loved how they put everybody over. I was really hoping that we got more than Dragon Off and Roxy. Right, like I wanted something. Mm-hmm. I want yeah. just something that kind of left me going. Okay, like that would have been great for the Uncle Howdy bit. Mm. Yes. Right, like that, and I think that's what makes me so upset is we didn't get that. We got and then you fast forward. No, but but I think coming off the heels of WrestleMania, coming off the heels mm. of the Bray Wyatt documentary mm. the the fireflies at the hall of fame the fireflies at wrestlemania during the hall of fame segment mm-hmm. right the writing was on the wall right you you should have struck while the iron was hot on that mm-hmm. and one of the most rockets and one of the most raucous crowds of the year in the raw after wrestlemania Maybe mm-hmm. try to reintroduce it back slowly, but but why do you have to do that? What 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 is gained by reintroducing it slowly? I'm not sure, but that's my point, right? There was never ever anything slow about any of those characters, right? 
So that, and then you fast forward to today, and I watched the opening segment of SmackDown with Cody, and I was just like, why? And I thought WWE shot themselves in the foot when they said that they were going to have two triple threat matches mm-hmm. to determine who was going to fight Cody at the pay per view in three weeks. Mm-hmm. All right, so you told me nobody was coming out to attack mm-hmm. Cody to set the new storyline. Okay, cool. Oh, it's LA Knight and AJ Styles. So okay. you're telling me backlash is going to be AJ Styles versus Cody Rhodes? That's, that's right. Okay. And you're gonna yeah. be you're gonna. I, I, I saw that Cody. you know I saw that coming a mile away when they put both of them on on the separate matches. You know, mm-hmm. you had LA on one match, AJ on the other. I said, oh, they're gonna meet up, you know, for the championship match and. I, I kind of expected AJ to win it in total because you're not going to shoot LA to Cody this soon. You know, I have LA lose that another match, right? You're not going to do face versus face. Why did everybody think Carlito was going to turn? Because Carlito is a better heel. That's the easy answer there. And he when made it look too easy. On, when will people turn on Cody Rhodes? I don't think they do right now. Not right now. It's, 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 they built up a baby face for everybody to get behind. Because of what he went through, it's now, the longevity of title reign. Right now, it's got to be feeding him, feeding him, feeding him. Like he can't, you can't do a run with a baby face like they did with Bret Hart. You can't do that now. Like we just has to be everybody. Like it's it's not that, but they have to keep entertaining. They have to make a person. Like I think they they're trying to keep Orton away. It's funny. Like you heard no mention of Orton at all this whole week. Not on the show tonight. Any at any mm-hmm. at any standpoint, you want to see that, right? Um, you want to see Cody versus, versus Gunther, but I think Gunther's. If you give me Cody versus Gunther, Gunther has to win the title. I don't okay. care if it happens. I don't care if it happens next week. Like that's progressing. That's progression. And Cody, even Dusty, his father, didn't hold on the straps long. The chase was always the story. The chase was always well, the story. And I think you're gonna see a lot of the the bigger names because we have the draft in two weeks' time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, the 27th and the 29th, we have the draft, and then that weekend, the fourth is uh backlash. Right, so my guess is draft 27th, 29th, backlash on Saturday, new rosters go into effect Monday the 6th. Okay, that would be my guess. But so you're, you're gonna keep people away, right? You're gonna keep people away and Wait until you see where they land at the draft, right? Because there's no guarantee that Gunther stays on Raw. Yep. Right. right. He could end up on SmackDown to go after Cody. Or he ends up on SmackDown to go after Damian Priest or Main Event J. Right? Or, hey, we're swapping titles. That's not happening. Right? They're going to... No, no, I, no, think Cody, I think Cody will create a new title. A new version of the title before they swap. No, no, I, I shouldn't say swapping title. Swapping champion. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, move Cody back over to Raw. I was like, like two thousand and five, <coughs> but often through the, through the years, right? Move Cody to Raw, move Damian or Jay or whoever to SmackDown. Right, right. They're, they're, they're the, and we're gonna talk more about the draft as we get closer. You know. Next week, we're, we're probably going to do our mock draft. Actually, you know what? Matter of fact, we are. That is next week, gentlemen. Get ready. It is mock draft time. We're going to put all three all three rosters on the table. And we are going to go at it like we always do. Hopefully, Tamita doesn't get picked at number 13 again. I'm looking at you, Butters. Tamina. Tamina. Oh. Anyway, um, so that that's gonna be next week. Cause then we go right into draft recap. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll kind of run you guys through the next few weeks. Like I said, next week the nineteenth, that is gonna be our mock draft in preparation for the WWE draft. The twenty sixth is going to be night one draft recap and a preview of night two. The third is going to be a preview for Wrestle. Um, sorry for Backlash uh, in France. I am not on the tenth. I will be coming back to Disneyland. 
So you guys do whatever you feel like you want to do that day. And then we'll be back on the 17th. At least I'll be back. With you. Butters agrees with you, David. What? Don't, don't, <laughs> no, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, I don't do that. I don't do it. No. Oh, okay. No. I, I didn't hear him. You yeah. can see, can't you? You don't have to hear. Yeah. No, I, I refuse. <laughs> um, Sorry. There's, there's, there's a level of ignorance there. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Maybe. And I and I refuse. Um, I have no problem saying that on air either. So, but that that's going to be it for us tonight, guys. We are going to get out of here. Uh, is the Friday part of the draft? Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. Is the Friday part of the draft? It's probably during the NFL draft, which, ooh. Now, now I need to look. because We may not be doing a show. Yeah, probably not. I will be doing a show. Right. There, <laughs> you you too will. <laughs> we will not be. So, yeah, it is that weekend. Yeah. April 25th through the 27th is the NFL draft. So, How does WWE drop the ball that big? No, that's um, smart because the word is draft is going to be trending. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably expect us not to be on the air on the 26th. But okay. as we know more, right, we'll let you probably make an announcement on Eagle Talk or I'll get Tom to say something on uh, HV Wednesday night, letting people know what's going on as we get closer to that night. Because I'm not going up against the draft. You out of your mind. Hmm. But we yeah. are doing mock drafts next week, so screw it. All right, four butters for OGP. I'm Ritz. We'll see y'all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe wherever you're watching us. And we will see you on the other side. Until then, peace, love, and joy. We out. Peace.